we are charged with the following problem. So we have a uh, cylinder, a cylinder of uh, radius uh, r. It also has a, a linear uniform positive uh, charge density, charge density of lambda. And already it's a little odd because we had already reserved linear charge densities for, for sort of one-dimensional objects, lines, rings. And we already have a, a you know, a, a three-dimensional or two-dimensional object, a, a cylinder with radius r, so that's already a little, a little odd. Okay. And so uh, linear charge density lambda, and we have a voltmeter with one lead on the surface of the cylinder and another lead some height, so, so lead on the surface. We have some lead some height h above the surface and the volt reader gives us some number, uh, some positive number. And given that the voltmeter reads out some positive number V, we want to know what is the height H above the surface the second lead is. Okay, so I think the first appropriate question uh, to ask, uh, given this question, is uh, uh, what? <laughs> uh, we certainly need a picture and some visualization to understand what is going on with this system. All right, uh, what is with the cylinder, with the linear charge density? What is this voltmeter doing? And what do the leads mean? All of that. Okay, so I have some cylinder. It has some radius R, fine. And so now I got this voltmeter. It reads voltage differences, of course. differences, what does a voltmeter do? Differences between the placement of its two leads. So it has a lead, they said there's one lead here at the surface, and then there's a second lead here at some height h above the surface. And it says if I look at the reading on the dial of this voltmeter, it gives me some positive number, which I'll call V. Is that number uh, necessarily the, the voltage difference? Uh, no, well, it is, it is the voltage difference, but is that positive? Which, which difference is it? So we have uh, from, if we call uh, the, the lower point R or the upper point, say, H plus R, uh, what difference is being calculated here? And we don't really know, but it doesn't really say, but we can figure it out. We know that the electric field is going to decrease as we get uh, further from the, uh, from the uh, surface of the charge. And so we know that the difference that it's taking, if it's a positive number, is the difference of, of the lead here at the surface minus the voltage at some height above the surface, because the, the, the voltage, electric potential, is going to be higher near the surface. Okay, so we have, we have to keep that in mind. All right, so we want to calculate, so, so what sort of physics can we apply to this problem? Um, we want to know how high this is above the um, uh, above the surface of the cylinder. We know that it's reading some sort of voltage difference, and so I think the the appropriate place to go is is the voltage difference related to the electric field. We've calculated electric field from infinite lines and cylinders in the past, and we know that the voltage difference between two points is given by the negative integral of the electric. Uh, field along a path between those two points, electric field, the, the projection of the electric field along a path, this E dot dl. Okay, uh, we're, we have the advantage 
given that we know that the this is a the electric field is conservative the integral doesn't really depend on the path so we can choose whatever path we'd like that simplifies this integral and so i think the obvious path here well let's let's first look at the electric field we know the electric field from an uh, infinite line of charge is equal to uh, 2 times Coulomb's constant times the linear charge density uh, divided by the height from the from the line I hat and so what is that how does that mean since we have a three-dimensional object and so what they're telling us of course is that with a with a uh, linear charge density lambda they're telling us that uh, DQ so let's get a let's get our coordinate system here if we call this delta x and this delta y what they're telling us is that the dq in a disk in an infinitesimal displacement dx is equal to lambda dx so they're essentially saying it's uniform so if you take instead of an infinitesimal point you have this infinitesimal disk of charge, the amount of charge dq in that disk is the density time, the linear density times the uh, linear width, which is infinitesimal, which is dx. Okay, so so then you can treat the uh, cylinder as long as you're above the surface of the cylinder as a um, uh, as a line, and the electric field is given by this expression, where y now is the height above the center. Of the cylinder. All right. So that was a little confusing. First, let's use the axis from a previous problem. Let's use the axis for this problem. <laughs> yeah. So the electric field is in, in the y direction, given the coordinate system that we set up here. So we've come up with electric field. It was a little confusing, but okay, we got past that. Now we want to go ahead and uh, uh, integrate this thing. And so since the electric field points along the y-axis, the obvious path of integration is going to start at this point and go entirely along the y-axis until you get to the upper point entirely on a straight line, so it's always along the y-axis. So in this case, our infinitesimal vector step dl is just equal to uh, dy uh, j hat everywhere. So then the dot product e dot dl just gives us the product of the y components dy and this and so we have 2k lambda y dy. All right, so now we've turned this path integral into a, a one-dimensional integral that we can solve. So let's go ahead and do that. We have delta v then is negative our endpoints, what are we integrating from? We're integrating from a location of r, and we're going to this distance from the center, which is h plus r. So we're integrating from r to h plus r of 2k, well, lambda k over y dy. Well, we know the indefinite integral of that, so the 2k lambda pulls out 2k2, k lambda log, natural log of y evaluated at r to uh, r plus h. Okay, so we, again, just some, some uh, of the basic steps here. So now we have um, negative 2k lambda log of natural log r plus h minus natural log of r. This is equal to dv. So now we're going to play with uh, the logarithms a little bit. And so if we bring this mi this minus sign through, turn this into a positive, this it turns into a positive, this turns into a plus, and the difference of logarithms is equal to the natural log uh, of the ratio of the um, uh, values. So this now then turns into 2k, again, I said k and wrote lambda, 
to k lambda natural log of the, the ratios, which is r over r plus h. All right, so this is now equal to the voltage difference. And so now we can solve for this voltage difference, uh, delta V over, well, solve for the height in terms of the voltage difference. We know we have this reading of the voltmeter, and we want to know what H is. So we can go ahead and solve for that. So now every on the other side, now take, let's change some colors. Now we take, get E to both sides. And that gives us R over R plus H now is equal to E to the delta V over 2K lambda. And so uh, finally now just we solve for H, invert, let's, let's invert this, this to the negative one, that gives me a minus up there, and then um, I can take the r to the other side. And so h is equal to e to the minus delta v over 2k lambda minus r. So now we might think we're done, but we, we have to, now that we've got an expression, it, we have to link it back to, to our original physical problem and make sure the physical characteristics of all of these expressions match our setup. And, and we find it, you know, right away that it, that we have to be very careful or we'll get, just get it wrong. We calculated this delta V as a function of this integral and the easy, the most logical way to calculate that is this integral that we did. We started here and we integrated from here. And so that integration is going to give us the difference between the potential at the top minus the potential at the bottom, right? The, this is the, the bottom, this is at the radius, and this is at the top here of this diagram. But remember when we we're thinking about our voltmeter, our voltmeter gave us a positive number. And since we know the the potential is higher here at the radius of the cylinder, we knew that our voltmeter was reading the difference of the potential of the lead at the, at the bottom minus the lead at the top. So in fact, the delta V that we calculated is equal to the negative reading on the voltmeter, because the voltmeter was the, giving us the difference from the radius to the top, and where what we calculated, what we integrated, was the difference between the top to the point of the radius. So given that the number that we were given in the problem is actually the reading of the voltmeter, so that's the opposite of the delta V that we calculated given uh, our, our typical expression. So therefore, if, since this is the number we know, our value of height in terms of all the numbers that we know is e to the positive v, that's the voltmeter reading, divided by 2 coulombs constant times the linear charge density minus the radius of the cylinder. So uh, what we learned here is uh, to be able to wa really understand what's going on, we really had to get a good picture to understand what role the cylinder was playing in all this. We used our definition of, of voltage difference to be able to integrate the electric field over a potential difference to calculate it. But then in the end, it all has to lead back to the physical system. You just can't do math. What exactly was happening in the physical system? We had this, this volt the meter that was giving us a specific voltage difference that turned out to be the opposite of the voltage difference that we calculated. So always the final part of a problem solving strategy, which is to check it, what you, what do, does, what you, <laughs> what you did, did it connect back to the physical system you started with?